the Radio Theater brings you Maureen O'Hara, Linda Darnell, and Mark Stevens in Fallen Angel. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we introduce you to three fascinating characters thrown together by mere chance and bound together by misfortune. They motivate 20th Century Fox's thrilling mystery, Paul and Angel, a story of the almost perfect crime and a marriage that follows strange paths to an unexpected ending. Appearing in the role she played so ably on the screen, we're fortunate in having Linda Darnell, an artist as beautiful as she is gifted. Co-starred with Linda is Ireland's lovely gift to Hollywood, Maureen O'Hara, plus a gentleman whose rise to stardom has been, to say the very least, sensational, Mark Stevens. Three great stars in Fallen Angel. On to our play and the opening act of Fallen Angel, starring Maureen O'Hara as June, Linda Darnell as Stella, and Mark Stevens as Eric. It's shortly after 10 o'clock at night. At a little town along the California coast, an interstate bus has just come to a stop. The driver walks back to one of his passengers and shakes his arm impatiently. Come on, Pally, wake up. Huh? huh? What's the matter? I've seen that sleep a night before. You know your ticket ran out the last stop? How much is San Francisco? 225. I guess I better leave you here. Yeah, I guess you better. Where are we? The town's called Walton. Grab your grip. You're holding us up. Ah, uh, fine, fine. Sorry, mister. Just closing up. Cup of coffee, please. Didn't you hear me? I said... And a hamburger? Well done. With onions. Okay, sit down. I'll get you something. What are you saying just now, Mr. Judd? What happened when you were on the police force? Well, I was saying that I handled plenty of suicide cases, and my experience tells me that Stella's not the type. She'll be back, Pop. She's been gone three days, Mr. Judd. Three days and not a word. Why haven't you told the police? Stella's a good girl. Just a girl who works here, just a waitress, but she's a good girl. If I called in the police, whole town would start talking. Here you are, mister. Coffee and a ham sandwich, best I can do this time of night. Thanks. Cigarette, Mr. Judd? Uh, no, thanks. Never touch them. Stella! <laughs> I knew you'd be back, Stella. I was just telling Pop. Stella, are you okay? Are you all right? I'm hungry. Sit down. I'll fix you something to eat right away. Well, good night, Stella. See you tomorrow, Pop. Good night, Mr. Judd. Stella, you'll come back to your job here, everything like it was, as if you never went away? Stella, you, you sure look tired. So what? I went away, and now I'm back. Where'd you go, Stella? Where do you think I went? Home. I don't want to talk about it. What are you, Pop? It's okay. Forget it. It's okay. It's not okay. Let him pay for what he got. Thirty cents. Hotel in town? A uh, block over and two north. Can't miss it. Good night, Stella. And who was that? Got me, Stella. Just a fellow that dropped in. Hmm. Sir Ellis, I presume. Yes. My name's Stanton. What are you doing in my hotel room? The clerk downstairs says... I was about to register for a room, Mr. Ellis, when I saw the post in the lobby. Professor Madley's in town. He'll be here tomorrow. What about it? Professor Madley, psychic extraordinary, will bring you a personal message from your dearly deceased. That's what the poster said, Mr. Ellis. Who are you? The advance man? That's right. Some nerve telling the clerk you're a friend of mine. I'm really a friend of the professor's from the uh, good old days. Well, that's different. A friend of the professor's. Then you'll be glad to do him a favor, won't you? Lend lease him thirty dollars. Thirty dollars? Oh, what's so funny? I'd like to laugh too. I came here to put the bite on you. Beat it. Put on your shoes and get out of here. Hey, what would my friend the professor say? I got enough to aggravate me. Relax. I'll get you out of it. With what? You broke, aren't you? I've got to have fifteen dollars by tomorrow noon to lose the hall downstairs and my deposit. What about the professor? Don't uh, spooks usually come through with an advance sale? Sure, when there's nobody to stop them. I've sold exactly seven tickets. Why? Because there's a certain dame in town who doesn't believe in spooks. She's not only the daughter of an ex-mayor, but the president of the woman's club. 
What she says goes. You're in Charmer. Miss Clara Mills will have no truck with me, my friend, not even on the phone. Well, let's sleep on it. No, I said. Naturally, I'll sleep here. You're in trouble, man. I got to pull you out of it. I'll call on Miss Mills myself. Oh, uh, any toothpaste? In the bathroom. Thanks. I uh, hope I like your brand, Mr. Ellis. Only listen to me, Miss You're Mills. wasting your time, Mr. Ellis, and mine. Oh, I'm not Mr. Ellis, Miss Mills. I'm not part of the Professor's Spook Act, either. My name's Stanton, Eric Stanton. Sorry, Mr. Stanton, I'm busy. So is Professor Madley. Appointments with the dead from coast to coast, and yet this soul of generosity finds time to drop in on Walton and deliver a message of hope. Yes, for money. He's a charlatan, a fraud. Now, look, Miss Mills, he and Mr. Ellis are just a couple of struggling artists trying to make a living. Like fortune tellers or vaudeville, fortune tellers or vaudeville team. I won't let the poor fooled, Walton, be fooled. If my these fakers would never have gotten a license. Your father, the mayor. Yes. And uh, what if your father had some message to give you from the beyond? Suppose he's depending on Professor Madley. Suppose to... you leave this house right now. Suppose I do, but don't forget, Miss Mills. The séance is at eight o'clock tonight, Walton Hotel. June. I heard, Clara. Trading on people's sacred feelings. Everything that's dear held up to ridicule. Cheap, vulgar tricksters. Why, June, what's the matter? I think he's right, Clara. June. I mean what he said about people trying to make a living. Why can't they make an honest living? Are we to judge? Well, it's too late now. There's nothing we can do about it. Yes, there is. What? We can buy two tickets. If we go, everybody else will. Shall I call the hotel? No. Oh... I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Here he is now, Eric. Hey, Professor, over here. Hello, Ellis. They told me at the hotel I'd find you over here. Hop's lunchroom, eh? And here he is, Professor, your old friend, Eric Stanton. My old friend? I don't recall. Three cups of coffee, huh, Stella? I can't seem to place you, my friend. Stop trying. We've never met before. You never met, but last night you... Glad to meet you now, now, though, Professor. (laughs) Delighted, Mr. Stanton. My assistant here tells me you work wonders. Ever since the Mills sisters bought tickets, everybody in town's been trying to get in. Oh, uh, about the Mills sisters. They're coming over to get a message from their old man. Right, Professor? I think it can be arranged. Dig up the vital facts, Ellis. Who was Mr. Mills, and what does he want to come back for? Okay, see you later. I'd better help you. Eric, my boy, you've got a great calling. Book promotion. You like to back that up with about five bucks? <laughs> Gladly. Here you are. I hope to see you in my rooms later. I have a fine collection of friendly spirits there. Scotch ancestry. Mr. Stanton. Hello, Mr. Judd. You know, they thought a great deal of Mayor Mills in this town. You better be careful. Much obliged, Mr. Judd. So long, Stella. Oh, uh, this is for you. Thanks, Mr. Judd. What do you mean? This is for you. Well, I happen to like that number on the jukebox. Any objections? What does he do? Judd. He came out here for his health. He used to be a big man in New York. Police force. Uh, I'd come to show tonight? Here, Professor Madley? Are you asking me? I'll be busy. Here, here's a ticket. Never mind. What's the matter? I don't go places alone. Okay. Skip it. Here. Oh, you some money. Yeah. Yeah, you change your mind about tonight? I won't change my mind. Maybe you'll change yours. Yeah. Maybe I will, Stella. Good people of Walden, you have just heard from the spirits of your departed loved ones, who, through me... Returned here tonight to tell you how happy they are in their eternal reward. And now we have come to our last and most difficult Clara, experiment. Clara, Clara, do you think we should stay? We came, of didn't we? Of course we'll stay. Of Look, there he is. Who? That Mr. Who Stanton. No peace or contentment Who's that with him, Clara? That Abraham girl? Mills. I don't know. Why, I, I can feel his troubled spirit trying to get through from the beyond. Yes, Abraham Mills, I can hear you. You are troubled because your daughter Clara has lost the fortune you left her. The bonds, the orange groves. 
Yes, you cannot understand how she could have trusted that man. Martin. John Martin. Clara! He came here how after you sat down. He I'm talked to her to sell everything. We better leave. Why didn't she ask the police Do for help when he ran please. away with the money? Oh, I never That's should have made you come. I'm You so will sorry. find peace, Abraham Mills, only when you know that Clara will guard the last of the inheritance for herself and her sister. Twenty-five thousand dollars. You may rest now, Abraham Mills. Your message has been delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, the seance is over. Gee, hey, Eric, you knew everything. I'd sure love to have my fortune told. I can tell a better myself. I'm serious. So am I. Come on. Let's go somewhere. I'll tell you, fortune. Well, are we going to sit here on the beach or are we going in there and dance? I thought you wanted your fortune told. I do. Okay. Well, for one thing, you don't belong in a one-armed joint like Pop's lunchroom. No. You got style, Stella. Ah, beautiful style. You inherited that. Your father was a leading citizen, rich. And they trusted people too much. And? Your mother? Let me see your hand again. Sorry. Her line seems to run out. <laughs> so is yours. My mother runs a boarding house in San Diego, and my old man came from a long line of drunks. Oh. Well, anyway, there's a man in your life. Tomorrow he's going to San Francisco. He's going to lie awake, unable to forget him. And what can I do about it? Kiss me, for one thing. Satisfied? Not nearly. Too bad, because that's all the kisses you're going to get. It's okay for kids, Mr. Stanley, but not for me. Where are you from, anyway? What do you do when you don't tell fortunes? I'll beg them for others. I passed actresses, directors, producers through a publicity mill, and they come out famous. The names in all the papers. You know people like that? I know all the people in all the places, like 21, Store Club. Ah, that's where you belong, Stella. Smothered in mink. I can see you there. And do you see me with a wedding ring on my finger and somebody to give me a home? Sure, Stella. Sure. Oh, no, you don't. I said no more kisses than I meant it. You talk different, sure, but you drive just like the rest. Well, you got the wrong girl. Come here. Take your hands off me. Come here. Tomorrow you're going. Where does that leave me? You go with me. What on? You got in the town with one dollar in your pocket. You're a fake. Why, you little jip. Don't you think I got eyes, too? I saw you in Pop's place stealing door of the cash register, and you call me a fake. Okay, Stella. I guess that's that, huh? I'll say it is. Go on, then. Go back to your one-armed joint and wait for somebody to come and marry you. I'll be seeing you sometime. Maybe. But, Eric, my boy, the car's outside. We're on our way to Frisco. I changed my mind, Professor. I'm not gone. But we need you. I can't be tied down. Cramps my style. What a pity. Oh, well, here. Little advance in case you choose to join us later. Thanks. Oh, uh, you might drop me off at Pop's lunchroom. The charming little waitress? I think I understand. Then let's go, Professor. Hello, Stella. What do you want? I can't make up my mind. If it's coffee, you'll have to wait. I just opened up. I know. Saw the sign. Closed to six o'clock on Sundays. I've been waiting. Why? Stella, my bus leaves in 15 minutes. Got a nickel? Yeah. Hey. I just came by to say, well, I'm sorry about last night. Save it. You have to listen to that music? I like it. Nothing you want to tell me? No. Don't give me that act. What act? You know what I mean. Hello, Stella. Hello, Pop. Okay, Stella. So long, for good. Well, what bit him? Nothing. Just trying to make his bust, I guess. <laughs> Gosh, I should like that too. Slowly, you stirred in my arms. Okay, Stella, this finishes it, baby. You'll never see me again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Eddie. <laughs> Always leave him laughing, don't you? Oh. Your landlady was very hospitable. 
Instead of wanting to see, I had to wait in the street. I thought you left town. I got on the bus, and I got off. I want to talk to you. Okay. Talk. Don't give me that smile. Okay, I don't smile. Well, I thought you had something to... Stop trying to kiss me. Look, you better beat it. Stella, I never said this before to anybody, ever. I'll marry you, Stella, if that's what you want. You? Don't kid me. I'm not kidding. Last night... Last night, I didn't know you. But I know you now. I know I couldn't pull out of here with the professor. I get on that bus. I can't get away without you, Stella. What's in it for me? A ring on your finger. What you said you wanted. What goes with it? I want a home. I get it for you. With what? With twelve and a half thousand dollars. Now, where would you get twelve and a half thousand dollars? What's the difference? As long as I get it. By murdering somebody? Talk you going to steal it? Listen, I Stella. I don't even know you. You know one thing. We're going to get married once I get that cash. Maybe it'll get me in trouble. I don't want to get in any trouble. You won't? Not the way I'll get it. I'm not even telling you how. You just sit tight and wait for me. That's all. Just wait for me. All right, Eric. I'll wait. Yeah, I'll wait. Hello? Is this Miss Mills? Yes. Or uh, Miss June Mills? This is June Mills. Who's calling, please? This is Mr. Stanton, Miss Mills. Eric Stanton. Oh. Miss Mills, do you suppose I could see you? Oh, really, I'd like to talk to you very much. That's impossible, Mr. Stanton. Besides, I'm just leaving for church. Church? On Monday morning? I happen to be the organist, and Monday mornings I practice. Well, couldn't I see you there? The doors of the church are open day and night. Anybody is welcome. Even me? Even you, Mr. Stanton. I'll see you in church, Miss Mills. Goodbye. Twenty-five grand. One half of twenty-five grand is twelve thousand five hundred bucks. Our stars, Maureen O'Hara, Linda Darnell, and Mark Stevens, will return in a moment with Act Two of Fallen Angel. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act Two of Fallen Angel, starring Linda Darnell as Stella, Maureen O'Hara as June, and Mark Stevens as Eric. It's half an hour later. In the church, June sits at the organ, unaware that Eric has walked silently toward her down the empty aisle. You play beautifully, Miss Mills. Oh! Oh, now look, Miss Mills, you can't stay angry at me forever. Can't I? Well, when a fellow says he's sorry, the least you can do is forgive him. All right, I forgive you. You're not through practicing. Yes, I'm going home now. Then I'll walk with you. You know, I'm glad I stayed over in Walton. Now I have a chance to square things with you and your sister. That might not be so easy. You still think I tried to hurt her? Whether you tried or not, you did. It's so easy digging up that information. Everybody in town seemed to know about it. Only did it to help the professor. I try to help one person. Someone else always gets hurt. Of course. You live by impulse. You never bother to think of you're following the wrong impulse. Ah, I see you don't stop at music. You read books, too. But books are phony. So are some people. At least they're alive. But you're scared to live, Miss Mills. That's why you bury yourself in books and music. Maybe you're the one who's scared, not I. How come? Because you don't know what you want. Do you? You know, if you didn't know me so well, I might ask you something. Well? Have dinner with me tonight. No, no, I, I, I can't do. You see, you're afraid to step out of your tower. No, no, it isn't that. Your sister? Of course not. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. Why should I be? Yeah. Why should you be? Should we say, uh, 7 o'clock? All right. 7 o'clock will be fine. Thank you, Miss Mills. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Stanton. Oh, it's after 1, Eric. I think we'd better say goodnight. All uh, right. Couldn't we just sit on the porch, talk for a minute? For a minute, then. Enjoy yourself tonight? Well, we saw a movie... We danced. I had my first taste of scotch. Uh, 
You like it? <laughs> it tasted like soap. Eric, why did you ask me out tonight? Oh, no special reason. You're very pretty. You interest me. In what way? I can't define it. Maybe it's your charm. Your talent. Ever think of a career? Sometimes. But I know my limitations. Uh, one shouldn't set a limit on what one can do. That sounds as if it came out of a book. And not a very good one. Uh, there goes that mind again. Well, there's still one thing we haven't done tonight. Not yet, anyway. But don't worry. We've skipped something? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to kiss you. Make you unhappy. Unhappy? One kiss goes a long way with you, June. You need a guy who'll take it the same way. Save all of your good nights for him. What makes you think I wanted you to kiss me? Didn't you? Hey, hey, where you going? To read a phony book and go to sleep. Good night. Morning, Stella. Hello. I waited outside your rooming house till after three this morning. That's nice. Where were you? Around. Well, that guy? Same guy you told off the other night? Name's Atkins, isn't it? Owns jukeboxes all over the country. He's got dough, huh? Oh, will you leave me alone? It's too early. Wait a minute. A wristwatch. It's new, isn't it? Like it? Where'd you get it, Stella? He gave it to you, didn't he? Atkins? Will you let go of my arm? Wait till we're married to ask me questions. Till then, I don't have to tell you a thing. We're as good as married right now. Oh, sure. You're dropping out of circulation, Stella. When you go out, it'll be with me. You've got a steady date with Miss Mills. I happened to see you last night at the roadhouse. I'm only doing that for you. Not as good as doing me. It will. A couple of days. Okay. A couple of days. But that don't mean forever. Morning, Stella. Good morning, Mr. Judd. Coffee as usual? Coffee as usual. Something still bothering this young man, Stella? <laughs> sure looks like it, huh? I wonder what it is. Glad you stopped by, Eric. Except Clara and I are about to drive downtown. Yes, are you ready, June? I'll get the car out. I'm leaving tomorrow. I want to say goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Stanton. Can we drop you off someplace now? Well, matter of fact, I'd like to go with you. You mind? Of course not. Come along. You know, this is a nice town. You're gonna hate to leave it. Will you be coming back? Well, it depends. On what? On what there is to come back for. Here's the market, June. Talk to Eric, Clara. I'll only be a minute. What would you come back here for, Mr. Stanton? For June? I gathered as much. June talked about nothing else but you since she met you. My cards are on the table, Miss Mills. Good. I want you to leave June alone. We don't know who you are or where you're from. What do you do? Nothing. You'll all also be interested to know that I... Uh, I haven't got a bank account. Because I haven't any bank... Our money's in San Francisco, Mr. Stanton. Half of it belongs to June. But it's in a bank where nobody can touch it until she meets the right man. Well, maybe I'm not the right man after all. Then you won't see her again. Suppose we leave that up to June, huh? I'm afraid I'll have to. Matter of fact, I uh, planned a little beach party for the night. You think she'll accept my invitation? I'm sure she will, no matter what I say. Well, one thing's nice, Miss Mills. It's nice to know where we stand, you and I. Oh, the fire feels good, Eric. It's been such a wonderful night. I could shut my eyes and listen to the syrup and fall fast asleep. I would hardly call that a compliment. Oh, but it is a great compliment. Sleepy? Uh-huh. Close your eyes, then. You know, if I've accomplished nothing else, at least I've made you like one of the things I like. The beach at night, hot dogs, a fire. Oh, you think all I do is read big, heavy books, don't you? Well, I don't. For years, I've been saving ads out of magazines. And sometimes I feel like the I'm the girl in the ads. Soft, alluring, gowned by Scaparelli. Uh, if I had money... I'd dress you like the ads, June. You'd have that Scaparelli gown. Oh, it isn't that important. Would be. When well, I took you to the theater, the concerts. Did you ever hear the San Francisco Symphony? On the radio. Oh, it's nothing like being there, June. Nothing. That's really a thrill. Especially when Franti conducts. He's going to tomorrow afternoon. Franti? 
Maybe we could meet him. I have connections in Frisco. Big people, June. We could leave Frisco in the morning, make it plenty of time, all right? No. Your sister? Oh, uh, yes. You got to do everything she says? No, but I... Well, I guess after tonight it's goodbye. I guess it is. I was just another person, the right person. Could have gone on like this forever. Just the two of us, like a dream. A beautiful dream. New York, Frisco, getting all those things in the ad. Going everywhere together for the concerts, hearing famous people play. Why, you might even become famous yourself. A great career, why we might even... June. June, are you awake? Well, how do you like that? 12,500 bucks and fast asleep. Who is it? Eric, I got to talk to you, Stella. I'm listening. Open the door. What do you want to do anyway? Wake up the whole neighborhood? Let me in. What are you afraid of? We'll talk in the doorway. Well? I, I can't tell you. I can't go through with it like a plan. The money. It's going to take too long to get it. I thought so. You didn't stand a chance. No, it isn't that, Stella. Look, you know how I feel about you. You've got to believe in me. I want you, Stella. I'm nuts about you. That wasn't the deal. What of it? I'll still get you everything you wanted. I got ideas that work. Pay off big. Come on. Let's get out of here tonight. I'm taking no chances. Stella, listen. Sorry, but I stick to a deal. Good night, honey. Hello? Eric. Oh, I'm so glad. Hello, Joan. I was afraid you might have left, Eric. I want to go with you today. To San Francisco? Yes, to the concert. There's a train at 9 o'clock. We'll pick you up on our way to the station. We? Clara's going, too. She has some... Got to go to San Francisco anyway to take care of some business well, at the bank. That's... That's swell, Joan. Thank you, Eric. We'll pick you up in 20 minutes. <laughs> May I help you, sir? Huh? Oh, no, thanks. I'm just waiting for Miss Mills. I believe she and her sister just went to the safe deposit vault. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, is there a public phone here in the bank? Uh, other side of the lobby, sir. Thanks a lot. Well, there you are. Sorry. I didn't think you'd be back so soon. I was making a phone call. Oh, June, great luck. I found them in. Who? Somebody very important. Who, Eric? Will you meet him? I said we'd be right over. Clara, go along if you like. I'll meet you after the concert. After the concert? Are you going to the concert with us? Just meet us in front of the auditorium at 2.30 sharp, okay? Very well. I'll be there at 2.30. Come on, June, we got to hurry. There she is, Eric, in the lobby. Clara! Hello, Clara. Sorry we're so late. You'll be interested to know, Mr. Stanton, that the symphony opens its season next week. But I suppose you were quite aware there'd be no concert today. He knew it all along, dear. June, what are you trying to tell me? we're married. Married? That's right, Clara. Here's the evidence. Certificate of marriage. That's where we've been. City Hall. June, you don't know what you've done. But, darling, I do. I'll have it in old. Clara, please, this isn't quite as sudden as you think. Well, what's the verdict? I... I hope you'll be very happy. Thank you, Clara. What are your plans? Well, I'd like to go home first and get a few things together. Then we could go away someplace for a little while. All right, Eric. Fine. We'll go back to Walton right away. Or oh, uh, I'd like to find a bank first. This envelope here. What's in it, dear? Oh, just a few papers. Rather not keep carrying them around, though. They ought to be in the safe deposit box. You can leave them in our bank. In our box. But the box is in your name and Clara's, isn't it? Will you be needing the paper soon? Well, no, I don't think so. Then let me take it. I'll put it away for you. Oh, that's swell of you, Clara. Thanks a lot. What do you mean, June? Eric's left the house. He's gone, Clara. But where? Surely he must have said something. No, nothing. I came upstairs. He was in the living room. He said something about coming right up. That was over an hour ago. 
Eric! It's no use, Clara. The chain's off the front door. He's left you. On your wedding night, he's left you. No, Clara, no. Something's wrong. I know it. Something must be wrong. The sign on the door says closed. I had to see you alone. I've been waiting out that little pop left. Well, what's so important? Or can it wait till I lock up? You're going to Frisco tomorrow, Stella? Am I? Yep. And tomorrow I'll have that money. All of it. You meet me up there and we'll go How on How do to... I know you'll have it? Because I'm going to Frisco with her to get it. Her? June. Well, I'm not going. And she won't either. I think she will. It's her honeymoon. Her what? I married her. This afternoon. It's the only way. Congratulations. Now, listen, we're not really married. I mean, we'll be divorced in no time. I haven't even kissed her. As a matter of fact, I can have it annulled. Good night, Mr. Stanton. Stella. What do you want? She's your wife, not me. I don't run around with married men. I did it for you, to get you what you wanted. Now, you keep your part of the deal. Oh, sure, but she's got the ring on her finger. She's not so dumb. Well, neither am I. Don't say anything you'll be sorry for, Stella. Don't do anything you might regret. Meaning what? Meaning that you and I made a deal. Do you think I'd do a thing like this? I was so crazy about you that I... You and your deals. Go on home to your bride, mister. I never want to see you again. Stella, I... Good night, Stella. Sugar in your coffee, Eric? Cream? Isn't it silly? I don't even know how you like your coffee. Why don't you say it? Where'd I disappear the last night? I have nothing to say, Eric. Oh, I'm sorry. But all of a sudden, now I was a married man, I had to go out for... For a drink. By the time I came back, you were asleep. Eric, why did you see that girl in the lunchroom? What girl? Clara saw you. You mean she went looking for me? Something like that. Well, that's fine. The sister of yours has been running your life up to now, but she better stay out of mine. Tell her that. I was angry with her, too, at first, but she means well. Yeah, what'd she tell you for? So you'd have a good time worrying? I didn't worry, Eric. Until that man came here to see you. Man? What man? His name is Judd. He's with the police. He's waiting now inside. What? Well, tell him to come in. Are you sure, Eric? What do you mean, am I? What are you looking at me like that for? Because that girl from the lunchroom, Stella Adams, was found murdered early this morning. In just a moment, we'll continue with Fallen Angel, starring Linda Darnell, Maureen O'Hara, and Mark Stevens. Back now to your producer, William Keeley. Here's Act Three of Fallen Angel, starring Maureen O'Hara as June, Linda Darnell as Stella, and Mark Stevens as Eric. A car has just pulled away from the mill's residence. In it are Eric Stanton and a man named Judd. Eric's face is gray, expressionless. His lips scarcely move as he breaks a long silence. When did it happen, Mr. Judd? Now, well, between three and four this morning. She was killed by a blow on the left temple. The weapon hasn't been found. You like Stella, huh? I... Yeah. I liked her. Yeah, you just got married. Congratulations. Thanks. You understand my position in this case. Chief appointed me special investigator. Where are we going? Stella's rooming house first. Pops there and a fellow named Atkins. Strange, isn't it? What is? When a man doesn't spend his wedding night at home. Who told you, Clara? Clara said you never left the house. Oh. I happened to see you around myself. You think I could have done it? Killed Stella? I know you could have done it. As far as I'm concerned, you're just a no-good, cheap, chiseling rat. Subtle, aren't you? 
But don't get nervous, Mr. Stanton. You're not under arrest. Not yet. Nothing new, Mr. Judd. Oh, who'd you pick up? Name's Stanton, Chief. Hello, Pop. Hello, Mr. Judd. Oh, uh, this might interest you, Mr. Judd. Stella's wristwatch. Yeah. The landlady found it under the porch step this morning. Whoever killed Stella must have dropped the watch. I'd better take it. Atkins still waiting in the kitchen? Yeah. Oh, here's his statement. Oh, thanks. Better check up on his alibi. There's a phone in the store in the corner. Right away. Oh, you can go now, Pop. Let me stay, Mr. Judd. She was a good girl. She never meant bad. Everybody liked her. Yeah. Everybody. Well, why don't you tell Mr. Stanton about it while I talk to Mr. Atkins? I gave my statement to the chief, Mr. Judd. Let's get down to facts, Mr. Atkins. You know me. I operate jukeboxes around here. And slot machines. You don't believe my statement? Then why not wait till the chief gets back? You told him to check my alibi. That's how I check alibis, Mr. Atkins. Ah, uh, you see this wristwatch? When did you give it to Stella? I didn't give it to her. I say you did. I didn't. I didn't. You gave it to her. You gave her the watch, didn't you? No, no, I... I will try again, Mr. Atkins. You picked Stella up last night at 10.15. You were with her until 2. We had dinner. Drove down to the beach. She said she'd marry me. Then you brought her home. And you came up here to kiss the bride, no. huh? No, I didn't come up. I left right away. When it happened, I was 50 miles from here in a motor court in Glenold. You did give her the watch, though, didn't you? No. Come on, Mr. Atkins, just for the record so we can clean that up. No, no, I never gave her any jewelry. I... Stop lying. I'm not lying. Don't hit me again. Don't hit me. Yeah. Well, Mr. Stanton, look, don't try any of that rough stuff on me, see? Oh, I wouldn't think of it. I just happen not to like his face. I checked Atkins alibi, Mr. Judd. The motor court says he was there all right. Oh, sure. Now, you can leave any time you want to, Mr. Atkins. Where'd Pop go? He's got a weak stomach. Said to tell you he went home. But I didn't say you could leave. Now, perhaps you can tell us who might have murdered the girl, huh? Could have been anybody. Pop, maybe. Maybe me. Maybe you. Yeah, possibilities are many, Mr. Stanton. You came to this town for no obvious reason. You meet Stella. Spend some time with her. Then you meet another young lady. This one you marry. And on your wedding night, you walk the streets looking for young lady number one. You're accusing me, is that it? Not yet. However, I wouldn't plan on any out-of-town honeymoon. We might need you any moment. Anything you want to say, Chief? Not a thing, Mr. Judd. Good day, Mr. Stanton. Why, June, you're all packed. You're not going away now. As soon as Eric comes home, we're leaving. I won't let you go with him, June. Not after that girl was murdered. He had nothing to do with it, Clara. June. June, listen to me. Once I believed in someone, too. No matter what people said, I believed in him. I can't let you ruin your life, too. June, a man who went out after another woman the night of your marriage. Maybe you're right, Clara, but I must give him every chance. I hardly know him yet. We're practically strangers. Together, maybe he'll change. He won't change. Maybe not, but at least I'll have tried. He's here, Clara. Goodbye, darling. Hello, June. Eric does a train in half an hour, and I thought... Forget about the honeymoon. I'm going along. Running away? What do you want me to do? Get framed? Get my face beaten in? You bet I'm running away. I'm going with you, Eric. You'll need me to get the money in San Francisco. Who asked for money? You need it. You're giving me your money? No, I'm not giving it to you. It belongs to both of us now. Okay. When this thing blows over, I'll pay it back to you. Every cent. I'll get the car, Eric. No. We've got to get on the highway without being seen. We'll hitchhike. Got to look as if we're just taking a walk. Now, that's different, isn't it? I'm ready, Eric. Okay, come on. Shut off that water, will you? I... I thought you might like a drink. I sure would, but not water. There's a bar downstairs. What do you want me to do? Walk right into Judd's arms? He probably isn't after you at all. There's no reason to be afraid. Oh, no. Murder rat's nothing. Sure, let's get out of this rat hole so he can pin it on me. I didn't say we should leave. No, but you meant it. The room's not good enough. Why don't you tell me off? You're sorry you ever came. I'm not sorry. I wanted to. What for? So you could drive me nuts with that quiet way of yours? Eric! What'd I bring you for, anyway? I don't need your dough. If I'd gone on alone, I could have kept right on going. 
Yeah, and maybe I will. Keep right on going. <laughs> Me, June. Eric. Come in. Were you sleeping? No, Eric. Did you get a drink? I took a walk. June, I'm sorry. What I said before, just nerves, I guess. It's all right, Eric. You gotta go home. No, in the morning we'll get the money at the bank. Why do you waste your money on a guy like me? I'm not wasting my money. I don't care what you do with it. Burn it up. Do anything you want with it. Hey, take it easy. If you had any consideration, you wouldn't even mention the money. Okay. Anytime you want, they'll fix you up with a divorce, just like that. Just tell them how I lied to you, how I married you for your money. I'm wanted for murder, that I... You didn't murder that girl. Maybe I did. They never even asked me. All I know is that I love you, Eric. Eric, won't you... Won't you even kiss me? Sit down, June. Let me tell you something about the guy you married. Before I came west, I had a publicity business in New York. A guy came along and wanted to buy me out. Fifteen thousand bucks. I took it. We had a big celebration that night. A couple hours, I'd lost half of it back to him. The dice were loaded, but I couldn't prove it. Anyway, I came west. Chicago, Omaha, and Las Vegas. That's where I dropped the rest of the dough. When I was kicked off the bus at Walt, and I had exactly a dollar left. I... Ah, uh, why go on? I want to know everything about you. All adds up to just one thing. A washout. I'm finished. You're not finished, Eric. Like I was a million years old. With a million jobs behind me. Did... Did you ever care very much for... Stella? I don't know. Yes, I did. Even promised I'd marry her. Can't figure it out now. It lasted a couple of weeks. Maybe less. Anyway, that's all gone up in smoke. Like everything else in my fascinating life. Maybe we can find what you want, Eric. When this is all cleared up, wouldn't it be better to go back to Walton? Sure. Go back to the chair. Or is it the gas chamber in California? You're innocent. There's nothing to worry about. Listen, maybe that's the way it works in your books. But even as a kid, I was always getting beaten up for something I didn't do. That's when I learned to run away before it was too late. You're tired, Eric. Lie down. Please. That's better. Now, tomorrow we'll go wherever you want. June, why don't you just go home? I... I want to be with you. Why? I need you, Eric. You need me? You're my husband. Right out of that book again. Yes, out of a book. We were born to tread the earth as angels, to seek out heaven this side of the sky. But they who race alone shall stumble in the dark and fall from grace. Go on. Sounds good. Then love alone can make the fallen angel rise. For only two can enter paradise. I'm so tired, June. So tired. <laughs> Four and a half minute eggs. I certainly married a man with a peculiar taste. Ah, you can still get out of it. Promise me you'll never say that again, Eric. Okay. I oh, promise. look out the restaurant window. It's ten o'clock. The bank's open. Hey, finish your breakfast. Stick and wait. No, you need the money. Wait here for me, Eric. I'll be right back. Hey, Bert. Hey, Bert. It's your latest. Thank your pardon, miss. Talk to you for a minute. Uh, uh... I'm so sorry, but I have some business in the bank. Your name is Mills, isn't it? I mean, Stanton? Yes. And I'm from the police. Where's your husband, Mrs. Stanton? I... I, uh, don't know. Where are you meeting him? I'm not going to meet him. Okay, lady. But you're wanted for questioning in Walton. Come along, please. Let's be sensible, Mrs. Stanton. Tell us where your husband is. If he doesn't want to come back here, Mr. Judd, he must have a reason. What reason could an innocent man have, assuming he is innocent? He is. He never could have killed her. No? Well, let's see what your sister has to say. Come in, Miss Mills. June, dear. 
Are you all right? Quite all right, Clara. Now, Miss Mills, you identified this envelope, which was found in your safe deposit box, as the one Mr. Stanton gave you. Now, why did he want you to put it away? He said it contained something valuable. Would you like to see your husband's valuable document, Mrs. Stanton? Look, a blank piece of paper. Why would he do a thing like that? I don't know why. I'll tell you why. He knows that as his wife, you'd probably arrange for him to have access to the box. That's all he'd need to steal your money. And use it to run away with Stella Adams. You're only assuming that. All right. But why shield a man who lied to you? Who married you only for the money in that safe deposit box? He didn't lie to me, and he isn't guilty. He ran away because he had to. He's always had to run away. Even as a child when he was beaten for things he didn't do. I tell you, he didn't do it. He didn't. Oh, he June. did June, dear, don't. Take her home, Miss Mills. You're responsible. See that she doesn't leave the house. Have the coffee, Mr. Judd? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's force of habit, Pop. But it's not the same, is it? No, Mr. Judd, it's not the same. With Stella gone, I think I'll sell the place. Hello, Pop. Some coffee, please. Mr. Stanton. Well, I knew you'd be back. Yeah. Give him his coffee, Pop, and then I'll take him to headquarters. Thanks. Enjoy San Francisco, Mr. Stanton? No. No, I didn't. You see, I started to worry, Mr. Judd. I started to worry about you. About me? Yeah. A man whose health isn't good. Why are you working so hard on this case? Maybe you better slow down. I don't like riddles, Mr. Stanton. Neither do I. So I made a long-distance call. The DA's office in New York. A friend of mine works there. You assured me you were in perfect health when you came west. They retired you because you'd almost killed a man. Almost killed him in a routine investigation. Reminded me of Atkins. They'd have sent you up if it hadn't been for your good record. At least, that's what my friend told me. Save it for the chief. Here you are, Pop. Oh, uh, you remember that wristwatch? The one that belonged to Stella? Ever find out who bought it for her? Perhaps. You know, you made your fatal mistake, Judd. When you had June arrest in Frisco... Oh, you scared me at first, all right. But then I began to think, and I kept right on thinking about that watch. I started a little routine investigation of my own. The result is that the Walton police will get a telegram from San Francisco. They'll know who bought that watch by tomorrow morning. That is, unless you admit it tonight. Shall we go? Sit down. Excuse me, Mr. Judd, but your gun's showing. You don't mind if I finish my coffee? I said sit down. You're insane, Judd. The police are waiting outside. Perhaps I am insane. Perhaps this might have been the perfect crime if I hadn't dropped the watch. Although I doubt it. There's always some slip. Always. But you understand, don't you? You know what Stella was like. You couldn't get away from her either. Those evenings she went out with other guys while I was waiting for her in the shadow of the porch. Remember three nights ago when you brought her home and kissed her? I was standing there. Insane, huh? Perhaps. Night before last, when she was out with Atkins, after he left, I went up. And when she told me she wouldn't wait any longer for my wife to give me a divorce and she was going to marry that slot machine operator, I hit her. Unfortunately, I didn't remember my ring. What ring? Here, on my finger. It's a large, heavy ring. I Get out I... of my way, Mr. Stanton. I got his gun. I got it. I'm going to kill him. He murdered his son. I'm going to kill him. Pop, nobody's killing anybody. Not anymore. It came in, isn't it, Stanton? Yeah, I guess it is, Chief. Heard everything you had to say, Judd. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, uh, got a nickel pop? Thanks. For the jukebox. So long. You gotta forget her, Pop. I'll never forget, Stella. You will. I open... Felt the same way myself until... Well... You'll find yourself, Pop. Goodbye, Mr. Stanton. Eric. Hello, June. I... Get in the car, Eric. Sure. Where to, June? To a place I don't think you've ever really known, darling. A nice place, Eric. It's called home.
This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood.